So, so yeah, I started a YouTube channel called Sucker Free TV. And, um, yeah, it's going to be all about spiritual Jesus. <laughs> okay. And some of the spiritual and supernatural things I've have had happened in my lifetime. And, uh, today, I, I took notes on, you know, uh, the topic of of unforgiveness and things of that nature, but I also ended up with the spirit of God because I kept trying to find out what are the foundations and what are the kingdoms of God. And God is broken down into like seven different uh, spirits, so to say, or spirit, you know, the seven spirits of God. One is wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, fear of the Lord, and the Lord. That is what I've taken for this week. And I'm going to speak on fear of the Lord. Now, God has given me permission again to tell parts of my life. And unfortunately, tell parts of my life is tell parts of my mom's life. So this goes back to the very first church I've ever really been to well really the second one the first one it went through a split like right after we got there and then we ended up at the church my mom worked at and you have to be careful if you're in a church and they're not you ain't hearing nothing that's gonna make you correct your life like yeah we do got the prosperity ministry going on we got you know how to get the houses the cars the business and all that thing that's great but if you're not being told behavioral corrections, that's when you need to really look. And you need to read the Bible for yourself. Because there was a time I spoke of fear of the Lord, but I didn't act like I feared him. Because I didn't, I thought I was taught in church that your sins are forgiven before, present, and after, which is true through salvation. And through grace but it's not for if you're willfully sinning when you have made this particular sin or sins plural a lifestyle where you just like hey this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do what I do when I do it and you know God got me you know what I mean that's not fear of the Lord that's not fearing him <laughs> because I, that's what was taught to me growing up and I tell you if I got the correct teachings, I don't think I would have been out here doing what I was doing. Because I had gotten to the point where after I got fit to do what I'm doing with somebody, Lord, forgive me, I sinned. And lay down and go to sleep. Knowing I'm getting ready to get up and do it again. Like, it didn't, nothing, it didn't, it didn't hit like that until God took me to hell when I realized, I was like, ooh, I've been disrespectful. I ain't even know it. You know, when you're on the way, because I was a hot girl before Megan Thee Stallion. When you're on the way to do something hot, and you go, Lord, don't let me get caught this time. Just this time. Well, all of them. Please don't let me get caught. And I know he's someone looking like, I'm a, this is a real fool right here. You know, I know I had, I know God had to give me to look like. <sighs> but he still protected me if you catch my drift. He, I ain't dead. I'm still here. So that's grace. A lot of people don't understand grace is when you're being a fool and you don't know you're being a fool. And God is going somewhere like, look at this one. Just make sure she don't die, man. Don't just give her a little jail or something like that. She just, just don't kill her. You know, it's kind of like that because you got to keep in mind how this thing works. Being disobedient. We get you punished here on this planet first. <laughs> and if you and if you die, you get punished when you leave. So I don't want to live in disobedience. So fear the Lord. I got that now. I think twice now before I go do something. It did it before I was like <laughs> God got me all good. You know, it did it, it yeah, it shows I had faith, but at the same time, it's like you plan. It to me is just like 
I just read in the Bible how, you know, Jesus um, went on his fast. And the devil came to him and told him, well, you know, since you're the son of God, turn that rock to a piece of bread. It's almost like, bet you won't, bet you won't, bet you won't. I mean, that's how, I think that's how the devil do it anyway. Then, you know, God rebuked him. Well, Jesus rebuked him, excuse me. And he goes up to the mountain. I think that's how a lot of people get treated in the suicide now. Throw yourself out the mountain so the angels can come catch you. Because you know they'll come catch you, you Jesus. And he tells the devil, I'm not tempting God. You don't spoke to test God. I ain't know I had been testing him all this time. I had no idea that I'd just been out here just pushing the test button. Just out here going, 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 going. Now that I have a healthy fear of the Lord, I won't be testing him. Because I didn't know I was testing him. A lot of us have been testing him and don't know that we was testing him because we're fools. And so this church I grew up in, the biggest word that got skipped was repent. Repentance is to have a renewed mind, renewed process, and that you're not going to participate in this particular activity no more. Because a lot of preachers out here don't want to talk about repentance because you don't, you don't plan on changing your life. Because if you actually read the Bible and read the Bible and prayed, for God to help you, you would feel conflicted or convicted in your activities. Cause I know when I was out here chasing tail and skirts and everything else, I was completely like, I couldn't really enjoy it. Like I could not enjoy my sins. Like I, when I tried it, I couldn't enjoy it. It's kind of like one part of me like, go, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Another side like, yeah, it's time to turn up. And then after I do it, I'm like, Am I going to hell for this? Like, you know, it's kind of, it, for me, that was my thought process. Like, I could not enjoy my activities. Everybody else is enjoying it and turn up me. I'm having a mental battle over my activities. So, as long as you have a mental battle where one side is telling you, no, don't do it, don't do it, you could be saying, if you don't have no type of conflict in your mind, heart, soul, that's telling you, no, 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 you in danger. I, I appreciate the Holy Spirit for screaming, no, don't do that. No, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why? Why? I appreciate that. Because now I know that guy has been with me the whole time. But if you don't get that, get up out of here, why are you here thing going on, you in danger. You in a whole lot of danger. You in more danger than you think. Just because a lot of people think, you know, because the devil ain't bothering you, you say, but you you in the worst position if the devil is not bothering you. Because he that means he has you. There's no need to bother you no more. If you being bothered, that means you with God. If you having to fight your temptations every single day, you with God. If you fear the Lord, you are definitely with God. I grew up and we would talk. I had to do a say I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, there's a caveat to that because God knows your mind and he knows your heart. He knows if you're really sorry or, re or you truly have repented. So you can't finesse God. And basically the teaching from there, I'm, I'm doing the same thing, trying to finesse the Bible and finesse God, and that ain't it. That's not it. So if you are in a church, first and foremost, read the Bible for yourself. They're always, especially for us black people, they always say if they want to hide something from you, put it in a book. And, that, and that's kind of what's going on. A lot of a lot of people, us, don't read. We go off what people say on YouTube. We go off what people say on Instagram. But we don't pick up the Bible and read. It's gotten to the point now when I'm watching some of people's pages. They have turned this to a black and a white thing with the Bible. Oh, that's the white Jesus. Well, if you read the Bible, you find out that ain't the cuss, that ain't the skin color that's going on up in there. Yeah, they mentioned Egypt and everything. Egypt and everything is mentioned in the Bible. So that means you're over there with the brown people. It's, it's there. 
I mean, a lot of people go, oh, ain't no heaven or no hell. It's a state of mind. Well, you've been tricked. A lot of folks go, well, this is my life. I'm going to live it. Well, baby, this ain't your life. This life is not yours. It belongs to God. Because if you can't control when you're born and when you die, this don't belong to you. That That's the whole thing. Like a lot of people are confused. This don't belong to you. Now, you have free will. I want people to know that God don't send you to hell. You send yourself. That is a trip you take on your own. And some people, like I say, I got a test drive. And it was a, it was a short one because other people, whew, what they saw, I would definitely need a therapist, buy probably some pills. So I saw just enough for me to get God knew what I can handle. Because I might be Billy badass here, but there, nah, baby, that ain't that that scared me enough to to uh to get somewhere. And sit if thy butt down. Then I said it just like that. Get so what? And sit if thy butt down. I don't mind being by myself to keep from dying and going there. A lot of folk got, you know, a lot of folk just don't feel God. They just don't. Like, it's just, I'm seeing it now. Now that I've been woke up, I was like, man, what was I doing? Man, like I, I, I ever, you know, every day I wake up now, cause then I've been woke up, cause that's a different, that's a different, you know, wake up. I got spiritually woke up. When you go there and you see that you can't finesse your way out, all you got to do is be like, Phew. yeah, yeah, ain't no finessing your way up out of there. So. I fear I, I I I have a healthy fear of the Lord, not knowing that He's so powerful that He created a place like that for His enemy. And if you are of the world, you are enemy of God. If you are of the world, promoting the world, you are the enemy of God. Because there was a time in my life where I was deep off into music. That was my goal in life was to be a rapper. And my mom, then she invested in my equipment, but she was like, you can't rap about God. Like, is that, why you can't rap about God? Like, I mean, it sounds good, but it's so dirty. Like, it, I didn't realize what she meant. She's no longer here now, but now I get it. I get the power of the word. If you notice that a lot of rappers are dying because they're placing curses on themselves. They don't fear the Lord. They don't fear death. They fear nothing, you. Nothing. So when they, you know, making this music, now they're making music. I'm fighting my demons. I'm fighting my demons. I'm fighting my demons. But you're taking drugs. You are ejecting yourself with demons. Like, you know, you, you're out here doing all kind of stuff that opens the, the threshold and the gateway for them. That's a lot of reason why. That's the main reason why God don't want us participating in certain activities. Because it it gives the toehold for the devil to be in your life. And it's written in the Bible. It's, a, it's around about the... Uh, the sin do not go to sleep being angry with somebody because it gives it gives the door it give it leaves the door open for the devil okay which is true so a lot of people have came up and found every way to try to refute the bible that's the don't read the bible with your skin read it like your spirit it'll help you understand a lot better if you read the bible as a spirit versus with your skin and your carnal eyes. The Bible is telling you about the spiritual world, not more over the physical. Because, see, the physical world is not as real as the spiritual world. The spiritual world is far more realer than the physical, than natural. I like the supernatural. 
I love it. I love it. So the, the seven spirits of God is wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, the Lord, the spirit of Lord, <laughs> and the fear of the Lord. I say the most important one is the fear of the Lord. Because it'll change your life. You won't go out here testing God no more. Because that's what we've been doing every day. You know, like, people, I have been told that, you know, the the, the sexual lifestyle, don't, don't get it twisted. It's not just for the alphabet community. But if you're married and cheating on your spouse, male or female, uh, and if you're legally married and you're out here, you, yeah, you're committing adultery. If you are, uh, what is it? I said adultery. Cheating on your spouse is adultery. Same sex, same sex sex. Um, fornication, that's for the uh, heterosexual people that's having sex before marriage. Oh, that is not going to the kingdom. And what they mean by that, that's for people that have made that their lifestyle. Not you slipped up and that happened. It's, it's almost the first one. Like, it's, there's, you know, it's almost the first one when they mention it, you know, in the uh, Bible. Because you could tell which ones meant the most based on how they were listed murder was i think murder was the first one you know what i mean and when you have you know when you have said to yourself that this is my life and i'm gonna live the way i want to live you have now made that sin of god in your life adultery you gotta think about it. anything you put before god is adultery. There's a lot of folk not knowing that they put their job before God. They put their career before God. Their family before God. Because I've talked to people and, you know, we have conversations of, you know, I want to make more money. That's, that's a lot of folk. Every, that's just about everybody conversating that come folk. How do I make more money? And then I'm going to say that entrepreneurship is spiritual. You got to pray. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that entrepreneurship is spiritual. Because the first thing that come out of my mouth is, how do somebody know to call you to ask you for some services? That's going to be on my next video about entrepreneurship is spiritual. But, yeah, back to fear of the Lord. As long as you got God in your business, you you safe. God has to be in your business for you to be safe, for him to protect your business. There are angels everywhere. They all over the place protecting you, protecting you in your car. Protect. Do you realize I was out here being stupid and I still was being protected? I was out here being a real idiot and God still was protecting me. He still had his angels around me, protecting me from home. And I'm out here running to it. I know they did overtime work with me. I know they're like, God, this one right here. Woo! This one, I mean, this one just won't sit down nowhere. This one got a lot going on. But they protected me. That's what grace is about. But now I have a healthy fear of the Lord. And I didn't get that growing up. I didn't get that teaching growing up. Because you know what? If your leader ain't doing what he's supposed to do, he can't teach you something that he don't want to get rid of. Cause some of our preachers out there got they they got they stuff going on too. They not perfect. God can use anybody to preach and speak. Don't get the game twisted. God used the donkey in the Bible, so God can use anybody. So you can't you can't counsel all these preachers because they they slip up. A keyword they slip up now. They just say hey this I'm I just want to do go out here and be what I want to be. Yeah. You might want to counsel them, but a lot of times God speaks through them. 
because you, you can't kill the messenger because the messenger got the message. And then it's up for you to verify that if that's the message that's in the Bible. Or you ask God to clarify it. Or if you see that that man is wrong, then you correct, you correct him. And I like to be corrected too if I'm wrong. And ain't for, you know, a lot of people wait on people karma. Well, karma is another religious thing, but in the Bible, reaping what you sown. Or better yet, when you, when you plant seeds, the tree harvests. <laughs> that's, 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 that's another one. Whatever, whatever you do out here is planting a seed. So when that tree grow and harvest in your life, you planted that seed. So if you plant seeds of hate and you got hate going on in your life, you planted that seed. That's the tree that, that grew up out the ground. If you plant the seed of finesse and you wonder why you being perpetually finessed everywhere you go, you planted that seed in your life. Nobody gets away with doing anything. And that's good or bad. Just so you know, if you do good, you go, you got to go ahead and do good things. You ain't going to be able to run away from the good. Because you, you do good things, good things going to chase you. Like, good things chase you. When you do bad things, bad things chase you. Everything in this book is free will. A lot of people know what they're doing when they're doing it. Some people don't know why they're doing it, but they know they're doing it. Some people don't have a fear of the Lord. Because I know if you fear God, it's some things you're not going to do. <laughs> it's just some things that you're just going to be like, oh, I'm not going to do that. But people that don't have that fear, which are better known as foes, they just walk right in and do whatever it is they do. And I've been that fool before. So I woke up with a thankful heart of, you know, that particular church kicking my mom and her friend out of it. That was it for it. When it first happened, I was like, who do you think you are? Like, cause I had no idea about this particular notion of following a bad preacher. There, there is a thing of if you are following a bad preacher and you know it, you're going to be punished for that. So when they kicked my mom out of the church, I was like, at first, I was like, hmm. But after my experience and my spiritual experience, it was like, shh, thank you. A lot of times you need God, that's God saving you, and you ain't even know it. When my relationship ended last year, and the girl lied and got me kicked out the house, at first I was angry. But now, thank you. You saved my soul. By getting me away from you, you saved my soul. Thank you, God. It hurt, though, because I was living in disobedience. You, you do realize, even when God come in and go ahead and they kick you out and break your heart and hurt your feelings and you lose everything you got, that's, that's also saving you and your punishment for disobedience at the same time. You you do get a double edge. You you do get saved and you do get punished for disobedience. You got to have faith and feel the Lord at the same time. So yeah. That's my talk for today. It's the spare seven spirits of God and I'm going to do some more research on like uh how to acquire them because according to the Bible, we are one with God. God created us in his image. So we, we, we do have the ability of having wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge. The spirit of the Lord can be upon us and along, and along with fearing the Lord. Cause you, this is free will, remember. It's free will. If you seek God, he, he you will find him. 
if you seeking he you will find that's what happened with me i went seeking god and he showed himself and i appreciate you thank you